Jim Maxine. It's a subset of Lux Maxine. And all of you probably know what these things mean, but they're not really anything new. It's not like Jim Maxine is a new concept or Lux Maxine is a new concept. The framing of it is new. The terms themselves, the way people use them and employ them, that's a bit new. If only because it has a kind of mass movement affect to it. But the reality is that people have been Lux Maxine and Jim Maxine forever. And in particular, Jim Maxine, this idea of improving your body's shape, your physique, as best you can to improve your chances, specifically with women, is something that is, at least in part, near and dear to my heart because I had a long streak of that in my 20s and in my early 30s where I was pretty obsessed with going to the gym. I started lifting back then around 26-ish, pretty late, all things considered, and I really, really got into it. And it was also something that, to me, taught me a lot about the world, about human nature. That might sound odd, but I'll elaborate on that. But also really taught me the degree of futility that you'll find in concepts like gym maxing. Because the thing that really struck me about gym maxing, something that's very explicit when you talk about gym maxing, is that it was always a vanity project. And you realize that the vast majority of people go to the gym, the vast, vast majority, they're all engaged in their own vanity project. Sure, occasionally you'll get some people who are going for health reasons. Maybe there's some 67-year-old guy who wants to continue on life for a while to see his grandchildren. Okay, so there are these familial dependencies that sometimes produce the desire to maintain or improve health. But generally speaking, in the vast majority of cases, Men, women, doesn't matter. It's a vanity project. It's about improving your looks, at least your body. So you can not only score better with the opposite sex, but score better in the world in general. And my interest in gym maxing, to use the term, years ago, steadily declined and virtually dissipated when I realized for myself that this entire endeavor was just a vanity project that I wasn't doing it for any other reason, not for health, not to improve my strength, not for anything. Although I did have phases where I was specifically interested in the health aspect or strength. But really, I was doing it to look good, look good for the world, look good for sake of women, that sort of thing. And there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. But to me, once I realized how much of a vanity project it was, that completely deflated the meaning, the sense, and purpose behind the project. Now, the difference, I think, between back then, this is eons ago, and the current year, where we have these terms, gym maxing, looks maxing, is that no one's pretending that it's anything else. It was less clear back in the day. There was more ambiguity. You might be able to put on a front and say, yeah, I'm doing it for health reasons, to lose weight, right? But... Again, how many people lose weight for quote-unquote health reasons? Well, sure, you might have some 50-year-old father who wants to see the graduation of his kids and he's morbidly obese or he has some severe heart condition. Sure, these familial dependencies will generate interest in maintaining and improving health. But by and large, when people lose weight, when they're really motivated, it's not for health reasons. In the vast majority of cases, it is for reasons of vanity to improve that person's looks. And here's where we get into the nitty gritty of gym maxing. Probably the most important lesson that the extended phase in my life where I really, really was gun ho about gym maxing taught me was about the absolute utter importance of genetics. And not just for the gym maxing there, but for everything in life. That's when I became fully cognizant that from your personality, to your intelligence, to your looks, to your body, genes reign supreme. Because as I was engaging in gym maxing, I quickly ascertained that I did not have a talent for this. I was not a hyper responder to resistance training. It took me a long time to get any results. And those results were, by and large, kind of paltry, which brought home 
Yet another lesson. Why do people pursue activities? Why do they do things? Well, usually they do things because they see benefits in them. But if those benefits are minimal or they come slowly and you can barely see them, motivation almost universally will decline. Very few people, you'll probably have noticed during the course of your life, pursue things that they suck at. Very few people think, ah, this seems like a really great thing to do. I am terrible at running, so I'm just going to run and run and run so I can improve just for the sake of myself, to please myself, to impress myself. Now, sometimes these people exist. They're odd. They're rare. They like to challenge themselves. But by and large, generally speaking, in the vast majority of cases, people pursue things because they get a sense of accomplishment out of it. And if you're not accomplishing something, if you're not getting something out of it that's tangible, that you can see, that you can feel, that brings real results, you're probably not going to be very motivated. And so after a few years in my case, because A, I have horrible genetics for weightlifting and bodybuilding, and B, all these other revelations entered the picture, my motivation to lift declined quite a bit. Because most people who lift, like fiends, typically have at least decent results, right? So typically people who really get into gym max and are just going to the gym, they're going to be good responders to the training. They're going to be more athletic on average. So this gets back to the whole premise of gym maxing. If you weren't the guy who naturally was inclined to go to the gym, well, there's still a chance you might be a good responder to training. There's still a chance you might have an above average body once you start working out. But on average, if you've never been the type who's been very athletic, who doesn't have a natural proclivity towards that sort of thing, chances are you're probably not going to see amazing results. And the thing about gym maxing, too, is it only can indirectly affect your facial symmetry, your facial proportions. The big caveat here, of course, is your weight. Some people joke around that losing a massive amounts of weight is better than getting plastic surgery on your face. And it's true. A really fat face, in some cases, can completely cover up features that would otherwise be quite good. It happens not infrequently. But overall, this idea of going to the gym to improve yourself, when I would argue it's secondary in the looks maxing hierarchy is not going to necessarily bring you the results that you want, especially if you're, quote-unquote, looking to be confident, right? Just be confident, bro. Where does that come from? Well, people who gain confidence from the gym usually see results that are visible. Their strength goes up. Their musculature improves. Their bodies improve. If you're making minimal progress because you have, frankly speaking, crappy genes in this particular domain, are you going to feel a lot more confident? Probably not. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't go to the gym or people shouldn't gym max or they shouldn't at least try these things. If you've never been on the quote-unquote self-improvement treadmill, you might as well try it if you've never done it before. But really, it's a question of sustainability. Sometime when I had a serious injury in my mid-30s, my interest in lifting really petered out. I still lifted for quite some time. It was a reduced schedule, but I was never able to rediscover the same interest I had, and that remains to this day. And when I do bother lifting, it's mostly for quote-unquote health reasons, to maintain some degree of strength and musculature, to limit atrophy, which naturally occurs during aging. But guess what? Shockingly, lifting for health is not nearly as motivating as lifting for the sake of your own vanity and your looks. It's this thing you just want to do and get over with. That's what health lifting is all about. And so these things, coupled by some other facts, should make you very cautious about the idea that gym maxing is a quote-unquote solution for you. Now, if you're the kind of person that just enjoys a challenge, even if you don't make tremendous progress, and it just produces something cathartic for you, by all means, go ahead and do it. But for most people, motivation is going to be very limited if the progress is not significant. On top of all that, these days, 
There's fierce competition. Lots of people are in shape. What is going to distinguish you as a potential suitor for women, but Chad Thunderschlang is also in shape? Not only just in shape, but he's in better shape than you because he has better genes than you. Not much. Now, what is all this pointing to ultimately? Now, am I saying you shouldn't go to the gym, you shouldn't bother, you shouldn't do these things? No. Like I said, if you're motivated in general for reasons other than vanity and you're not too bothered by not making significant progress, assuming you're not genetically gifted, by all means. But broadly speaking, generally speaking, and this is just my opinion, people should pursue things that they have natural talents and inclinations to. So, for example, if you're not athletically inclined and you're going to make minimal progress at the gym, does it make a lot of sense to spend copious amounts of time at the gym trying to, quote unquote, gym max and improve yourself? Probably not. And not everyone has a talent. Some of us, myself included, are just mediocre across the board. But nonetheless, you should take the time to discover what your strengths are what things you could actually benefit from if you spent the commensurate time pursuing them because that typically is what keeps motivation going in most people. Basically, you have some talent. You pursue activity X. You're pretty good at X. Activity X yields results. You continue, continue, you move on to Y, and you stay motivated, at least for quite some time, assuming there are challenges that you can A, handle, and be eventually overcome. And that doesn't need to be the gym. That can be really anything. How much that will help you in the dating and mating game, of course, is questionable. Because if your real talent is, for example, deciphering computer code, that probably won't have a direct effect on the dating and mating game. But it might have some effects down the line, especially with respect to, quote unquote, status maxing. And that gentleman, unfortunately, is the black pill truth, the reality behind Jim Maxine. Not everyone is cut out for it at the level of genes, the level of psychology. And for many people, it's going to be a tremendous expenditure of time for few to no results. And so that's why you should really take into consideration before you go down at least this aspect of looks maxing, why it is you're doing it, how it is you're doing it, and what results you're going to get. And perhaps take the time to see whether or not your results in other domains might be better and your time might be, as a consequence, better spent in those domains. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. As always, please subscribe. If you're not yet subscribed, hit the like button, like the video. Please share the video with others and hit that bell icon to be informed of my videos. And as always, if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May God's watch over you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.